Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McFratney. Little Nut Brown Hare, who was going to bed, held on tight to Big Nut Brown Hare's very long ears. He wanted to be sure that Big Nut Brown Hare was listening. Guess how much I love you, he said. Oh, I don't think I could guess that, said Big Nut Brown Hare. This much, said Little Nut Brown Hare, stretching out his arms as wide as they would go. This is an extract from The Gecko and the Echo by Rachel Bright. Enough, they implored. You're all me, me, me. We don't want to listen. It's too much. Don't you see? Goldie was shocked, dumbfounded and stunned. Greatness like this should never be shunned. They were just the wrong audience. That was a fact. It was time to go elsewhere to practice this act. So with an indignant swish whip of a tail, Goldie flounced on the Red Canyon Trail. Hey, we had a bit called Puppy learns to, do, learns to say Please. One day, Puppy and his friends were making a picture together. Puppy was creating big, starry scenes. Puppy had chosen his stars and he wanted to stick them down. He looked around, but Hippo had the glue. Hippo, give me the glue, Puppy said. Puppy had forgotten to say, please. That's rude, thought Hippo, and he moved to another table. Then Puppy decided to put glitter on his stars. But Kitten used all the glitter. Puppy said, Kitten, I want that glitter! And he grabbed it. Puppy had forgotten to say, Please! That's not very kind, said Kitten. And she went to join Hippo. The Highway Rat by Julia Donaldson. Some ants came crawling along the road, then stopped with a somersault. Far burning his teeth was the highway rat who bellowed a deafening halt. Give me your sweets and your lollies, give me your toffees and chews, for I'm the rat of the highway, the highway, the highway. Yes, I'm the rat of the highway, and nobody dares to refuse. Well, the Ladybird Herd by Julia Donaldson. Two crafty robbers, one tiny ladybird, and a whole farmyard of fun. Hefty hue and lanky rhyme have a cunning plan to steal the Shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock. The mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair, by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said. And just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. 
George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer, and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere, so there were never any children to play with. Happy World Book Day! I'm going to read an extract from my favourite book, James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. I enjoy it because I love the way he describes the characters. Aunt Sponge was enormous and very short. She had small, piggy eyes and a sunken mouth, and one of those white, flabby faces that looked exactly as though it had been boiled. She was like a great, white, soggy, overboiled cabbage. Aunt Spiker, on the other hand, was lean and tall and bony. And she wore steel rimmed spectacles that fixed onto the end of her nose with a clip. She had a screeching voice and long, wet, narrow lips. And whenever she got angry or excited, little flaps of spit would come shooting out of her mouth. Ooh, can you guess? Here I am behind the mask. Hello, everybody. Today I will be reading from George's Marvelous Medicine by Roald Dahl. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George, don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said, and just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer, and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere, so there were never any children to play with.